It's night and day. Dissidia Final Fantasy. Night and day, back again. Yes, back in the world of Dissidia Final Fantasy. Yeah, there was another recent update adding a new character to the game. This time, Renoa from Final Fantasy VIII. Awesome. So, we get to dive in, and uh, Renoa gets to be back with her beloved Squall. So this should be cool. Yeah, that's right. The two of them are reunited. And it feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what new storyline they've added to accompany her. Yes. If you see, if it's anything like Locke, she won't actually be in yeah, it at all. She does not exist anymore, and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Oh, this looks like it. Oh. Let's just make sure, shall we? Display the map. Yeah. Those are the only blank nodes, yeah. Yeah. So no fight scene again. Hmm. No fight scene. Yeah, just two cutscenes, and hopefully she's in one of them. <laughs> It'd be cool to see like Squall and her interact or something like yeah, that. Yeah, really. Uh, I guess, yeah, I have no choice but to see. Let's see dive for ourselves. in. <laughs> no choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a threat against my life unless I watch this video. There's a dude from Square Enix with a gun behind us. Yeah. <laughs> What were they thinking back there? This is a battlefield, not a playground. A lark now and again is needful. Would you that every foe were a plains gorger? Uh, if you put it that way. Well, if it ever does come back, we'll beat it. Right into the ground. Hm. And revive this world. It might never be what it was, but it could become something new. <laughs> In what manner do you imagine the gods would shape this realm? Hadn't thought of it. From the look of her tower, Materia might use technology as a foundation. And if Spiritus were in charge, no one would ever look at you funny for using magic. The thought of either is alluring. <sighs> That's all well and good, but what if things start going off the rails? We simply give them a push back on track. <laughs> so, do you think that new life will ever spring from this barren ground? The possibility exists for certain. I guess that maybe one day some flowers might. Soon to be followed by trees, then insects, then animals. It would be compelling to observe the genesis of life with mine own eyes. You don't want to get ahead of yourselves now. It'll be wonderful. I just know it. Okay, so three right. women, none of them were Renoa. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, either Renoa looks oddly familiar, or she's not in there. <laughs> so... So it's interesting, we've got the three of them just pontificating and postulating and hypothesizing, <laughs> pondering, just trying to figure out, hmm, you know, we saved the world, but it's kind of a barren waste. <laughs> I wonder yeah. if anything useful or will ever come out of it. Yeah, it's like, yeah, exactly. I wonder if uh, there's even a point to this or not. <laughs> it's like, what if something could grow here, what could ever grow here? So they're just like talking about the future, I guess. But It almost seemed like Lightning was condescending to them. She's like, I guess maybe a flower could grow here. Like, yeah. What do you guys want? <laughs> it's it funny because Ishtola and Terra are like, both speaking properly to each other and everything like that, and then Lightning's just like, I'm gonna kill that thing and put her into the ground. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, she's keeping up to them in terms of conversation, but you can obviously tell she's such a sore thumb out of the, everything. Yeah, it's so definitely great. a different mindset. Oh yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I did like that Terra was, she made the one comment about maybe you would be able to use magic freely here and that'd be no big deal because mm. in, in her game, in her world, the use of magic was a big, a big um, thing, where the, 
prior to the events of that world, there was this Magitech war where just magic was used to kind of wipe out oh, civilization. Wow. It was just, I yeah, the the use of magic is forbidden, and no one really knows how to do it. You find only this one, um, this one clandestine kind of town where mm. they use magic and they try to keep it secret that they can even do mm. it. Okay. And the Empire is trying to figure out how to use magic. Like we talked about before, they take magic from espers and then infuse it into their own people and machines and call it Magitech. Right. So, but it's not like freely used at all. Mm. Okay. So, yeah. it's cool that she was referencing that mm. again. But, um... Yeah, I guess we should hop into the yeah. next one and see if Renoa. <laughs> yeah, if she makes an appearance or not, for sure. <laughs> or she and Locke are just somewhere else. <laughs> if they're waiting until they have like six people and then they all come together at one time yeah, or that's... something like that, like we were mentioning about last time. Right. But just hopefully as not. A financial decision yeah. so that they can <laughs> save money on the voice actors. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Let's see what happens. Renoa, are you there? Renoa, I miss you. Oh, cool. Final Fantasy IV land. Yeah. <gasps> Squall. It would seem you bore a heavy burden. You bet we did. Had to form an unlikely alliance. Cloud's expression says it all. Well, for a while. I was conflicted. Zephyroth? Yeah. He doesn't scare me anymore, though. That's the past. I've moved on. Admirable. Not really. All I did was stop running. Running from my ghosts. No more. I won't let my friends down. Not ever again. You were Tony. I just show them you care. They're gonna see through your act to know you're still conflicted. Don't make them dance around it. No use trying to change the past. Just gotta live with it. I suppose. When lacking an escape, you must move forward. That's right. No looking back. No regretting your decisions. <laughs> then let us do just that and prepare for the struggles ahead. Shall we? All right, let's go. All right, so we got Squall, but no Renoa in sight. Uh, did Kane just die? He <laughs> <laughs> jumped in a hole and, like, never seen again. <laughs> well, he died as he lived. Yeah. Just suddenly, out of the blue, he was there, and suddenly, out of the blue, he was gone. <laughs> they were acting as if he were there for the entire conflict. Right. So that's yeah. kind of strange. Mm, yeah, for sure. And... With I mean, at least, yeah, like you said, Squall was there. So that gives some form of reference to the whole Renoa thing, but... Yeah, I mean, they that's... really didn't bring her yeah, up, so they're yeah. saving that for later. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, but I mean, pretty much figured that would be the way it played out after the Locke mm -hmm. DLC cutscenes yeah. did not <laughs> include Locke. Yeah. So, I mean, I would have thought they would have taken the opportunity, since they're adding all these extra characters, to weave Kane, Ace, and Ramza into the story with them. Mm. So now it seems like they're kind of doing the the opposite, where they're saying, no, 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 Kane and Ace and Ramza were there the whole time. <laughs> they're catching yeah. up with people after the fact. Right, right. But the other guys who were being added weren't there the whole time. Mm. They're going to be added later, I guess, and we'll show you what they've been on about later. Or maybe they'll do like with what they did with Vane, and they'll retroactively add them at right. a certain point in yeah, the past. Yeah, yeah. Or he's just like... He's just like one segment of like our main group going from one place to the next or something like that. Yeah. Like Renoa just pops up in in the subsection where Squall had his uh his path. But yeah, it it's I mean, I guess I understand where they're coming from of like not wanting to like reshape the past game, but at least like put it in the future if you have 
I mean, you have the character already in the game now. Right. At least you can reference it or even make the uh, the people that are already still in the game, like not Renoir, but Squall even reference Renoir or something yeah. along those lines. I mean, so. I would like it better if they didn't reshape the past game. If they just said Kane, Ace, and Ramza showed up later <laughs> yeah. and uh, yeah. added to whatever story evolves from there. Because mm. to have them suddenly in the past, I would like it better if they did it like they did with Vayne and say, okay, now that they're saying they're here after the final batter, battle, let's show where they were and what they were doing and these extra fights before the final battle too. Right, right. So it all makes sense mm -hmm. instead of it feels like they each get a one shot that's rever acting like they were here the entire time without any reference to any instance where they were here fighting. Right, right. So I think hopefully they'll still do that because they can just go back at any point and just shove some, some nodes in like they did with Vayne. Mm -hmm. And then... But to do that with Renoa might be a little bit weird because Renoa has such a key relationship with Squall mm. that it might... To have her pre-existing would probably change the way that Squall would handle himself mm. as yeah. opposed to just doing the pure loner thing to get stuff done and be more efficient. And like, oh, F these guys. They're going to talk all day. Whatever. I'm just going to go where the action is, get take care of business. Right, right. But then he would have like, oh, crap. I got to know where Renoa is mm -hmm. at all times, make sure she's safe. Right. As opposed, so he's, he's less free just to cavalierly jaunt off or do, just throw himself in, mm -hmm. in danger. Right, path. yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that's a really good point. Because as, as we were saying, like, I was thinking the same thing. Because for Squall to see Renoa, like, anywhere in this, in this game, whether it be the beginning or the very end, that changes everything after that point. So, yeah, that's, this is probably one of those instances where they can't retroactively change anything. Like, this would have to be after the fact, or, like, whatever they have planning for a bigger, um, like, DLC down the line, she'll become a part of that instead. And then you'll get to see Squall change his, I guess, his manner of doing business than he was in this version of the game. Which would be cool to see him, like, a bit more... Uh, concerned about somebody else as opposed to him like literally walking off in every cutscene he's in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so in this one, it was interesting having the four people... It's still really fun to see these cutscenes because you get to see the characters interact who don't interact mm -hmm. ever because yeah. they're not... They don't exist in each other's games. Mm -hmm. So it was interesting to see these guys talking about regret and, you know marching forward yeah moving forward moving on, yeah. Yeah, yeah facing your past and moving forward and not running from it because that's something that squall has in common or uh that cloud has in common with um with kane mm. where kane didn't get into anything specifically that's that was kind of interesting they had kane play the taciturn role where he wasn't really sharing all mm. the information and Cloud, surprisingly, was being more vocal than other people because that's not usually any of the roles of any of these guys. Mm -hmm. Maybe Noctis. Mm -hmm. Noctis is probably the most talkative oh, yeah, or outgoing yeah. of these guys. But but yeah, Cloud actually explaining, yeah, 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 I, f I fought my demons, I fought Sephiroth, I'm not afraid, I don't run anymore, I did that before, but now I'm moving forward. They're like, oh, that's admirable. I was like, not really. Well, if you get into my backstory, there's some stuff there that I'm not exactly too proud of. But you know, don't regret anything. Move forward. And Kane's like, oh, hmm, don't regret anything. Maybe he doesn't really agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't just. Uh, yeah, okay. He he kind of agreed with the the move forward part. But yeah. Kane has some pretty hefty regrets in Final Fantasy IV. He. He does some crap, man. It's, <laughs> it's not the best. Oh, man. So... <laughs> yeah, it seemed like this was all about just, I guess, making peace with your demons. Like, about just moving on, getting ready for the next fight. Yeah. Now, that seemed what, like, that seemed what Kane wanted to do. It was like, put it all behind him and just keep marching forward. And he just jumped in a pit. <laughs> he said he was on board with the plan but then there was a cliff nearby and he was like you know what I got some pretty hefty regrets guys yes. so actually I'm looking forward to nothing I have nothing but regret I'm looking forward to the bottom of this pit yeah. <laughs> so yeah Kane that's just he's a dragoon and yeah. the way dragoons work is they have the jump ability mm -hmm. you see them using it in the, in the game all right. the time so he just did like his I'm an acrobatic badass and jumped away. Yeah. But yeah, your version's funnier. <laughs> yeah, I just like thinking. 
<laughs> and Kane is like an awesome. He's a. He looks fantastic, and I like how he interacts with other people. Like in this game, at least. Yeah. Um, so in this game, he's pretty cool. But. Well, I mean, this has been his single cutscene in this game, yeah. really. <laughs> well, <laughs> so. and, yeah, and his fighting is awesome as well. Yeah. yeah. I, I definitely do agree. I like the dragoon armor with mm. the whole dragon motif on mm. it. Yeah. Like Kane has it. Other other dragoons have it throughout the series. Mm. I think in Final Fantasy XIV, there's one named Stinian or something like that. And then in Final Fantasy XV, there's a female dragoon named Aranea, and she looks badass in her dragoon armor. Mm. So, yeah, the dragon motif armor almost always looks pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, Kane, he's got some heavy regrets. Some spoilers for Final Fantasy IV, who thought we'd get into this during the Final Fantasy VIII reveal. Yeah, I know. But might as well go into it. Yeah. Um, yeah, Kane, in that game, he and Cecil are best friends. Mm. Uh, they were brought up together serving the kingdom of Baron, and as at the beginning of that game, the kingdom of Baron pretty much is becoming more and more corrupt, and we talked about Cecil yeah. has this conflict of uh, this like moral this internal conflict. internal struggle yeah. that he goes through, yeah. Right, yeah. and he ended up breaking away from the kingdom, and it's, it's a tough call. Uh, but Cain, another, another point between the two of them that makes things more difficult is that Cecil's in a relationship with Rosa, who's um, just the female lead or his love interest. Mm -hmm. One of the female leads, because her role isn't extremely prominent or anything. But um, she has she was in a relationship with Cecil before the game started. But Kane was always envious of that because mm -hmm. Kane loves Rosa. Okay. So that immediately sets up some drama. Oh. But where things get really crazy is Cecil decides after another corrupt kind of mission takes place, uh, Cecil decides, okay, no, no, that's it. I, I quit. I'm leaving. And Kane, he doesn't necessarily oh, want to go okay. along with it. Mm. And then later, it turns out that they're reunited a little bit later, and Kane is working for Golbez, who is this force that's kind of taking over the kingdom of Baron mm. and, like, slowly but surely... Uh, waging war on the other kingdoms of the world. Okay. And Golbez is in this game yeah, as the yeah. representative from 4. He's the villain. So then Cain ends up like just coming at Cecil directly and attacking him and trying to get Rosa kidnap her. And, oh, wow. Yeah, so yeah. crap really hits the fan. Cain does some things that are definitely worthy of regret. Wow. So Yeah, so it is a little bit more complicated than that. It's not completely cut and dry. So it's not like Kane is just 100% like the bad an evil guy dick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's not like that, but still, I mean, he has an active role in doing some some stuff that uh, is not the best stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so that's probably why he was like potentially listening to the whole yeah, no regrets, move forward. Yeah. Like he's ready to move forward, but he it's, didn't really yeah, instantly jump on board the no regret train. Mm, yeah. He seems happy to want to move forward, but yeah, I guess when you betray your best friend, like go to like murder. <laughs> <laughs> when you resort to murder, you're gonna have some kind of regret. Yeah, so. I mean, face those demons, sure, move yeah. forward, sure, but I mean, you, it's not like you just should forget about this stuff and oh, the past is the past. No, yeah. dude, <laughs> time to do it all over again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's the way that you move forward and ignore the past. Or overcome the past, mm -hmm. and then there's there's the way where you basically you forever atone. Yeah, where that's good. kind of a, a major difference between um, between Cloud and Vincent. They're both from Final Fantasy VII, mm -hmm. and they're both badasses with like intense abilities and kind of really dark points in their past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have this conversation where they they make a narrow escape from their enemies, mm -hmm. and then Cloud he's. Throughout the, the earlier part of the movie, he's like, oh, he's just, he's weighed down. He has all these burdens of regrets of, of the actions of what happened in the game. Mm. And um, he ends up talking to Vincent. He's like, man, Vincent, can you ever, can you ever forgive yourself from all these things that have happened in the past? And Vincent's like, I, I don't know. I've never tried. Because <laughs> <laughs> Cloud's more from the perspective of, you got to try and work through it and right. you know move on. And Vincent's more of the, of the perspective of no, <laughs> just like just resist and like shove it down as much as you can, like that kind of. You're not supposed to move on. Mm. You're supposed to just own it. Just live in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. You're supposed to make sure 
you never forget any of that stuff. And you keep that as your driving force. Like, there is no period where you your slate is wiped clean and you're like, well, I've atoned for all my sins now. Oh, yeah. I am now ready to do, do, do. I can live a happy life forever. Nope. You always atone 100%. You are fighting <laughs> to atone forever. Like, I, the character Angel from from Buffy the Vampire Slayer is kind of similar to that also. There's there's no 100% redemption. The fight never ends. Wow. <laughs> you've got darkness in your past and you've got to 100% Just keep strong. fighting to... Yeah. To set things right. Mm. Hmm. Keep fighting the good fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never lay the sword down. You don't... <laughs> Do you, Is it tough to forgive yourself? I don't know. That's not the right move. Yeah. You don't forgive yourself. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's a really awesome like outlook on it. Really cool way to look at it. And it's a cool differentiation between the characters also mm. because in some ways... So if you have two kind of reticent soft-spoken characters who yeah. are the silent badass type or that sort of thing then they can still have nuances that set them apart and right. make yeah. their character development very different hmm. what they're fighting for their reasoning right and it doesn't take like a lengthy or i guess like the entire movie to understand that it could be just one sentence of it's like oh i've never tried like and that just sets them completely apart yeah, yeah. Yeah, just like a couple words would change them entirely. Yeah, it's really cool to see, like, like the writing and stuff like that, how that went down. That's mm -hmm. really cool. Well, that's going to do it for these cutscenes for the Renoa expansion, the Renoa DLC, whatever you want to call it. But now we're going to show you some Renoa gameplay to see how she is in combat and the different modes that they've given to her character because they actually put a lot of attention to detail. They've got her, and she can summon her pet dog, Angelo, and she can go into this... Uh, angel wing mode we're gonna go and cover all that in the next episode uh, sounds awesome can't wait so we'll see you guys in the next episode and we'll go into her backstory as well like mm -hmm. we did with Vane and Locke so we'll see you guys then bye yeah he changes form in the final fight of the game oh okay That's what this is about. okay I was like did he just like go to the gym and go tanning like <laughs> for the last like 20 years of his life. <laughs>